Let's look at some motivation for McLaren polynomials and Taylor polynomials. So I'm going to start with the polynomial 2x to the fifth plus 3x to the fourth plus 6x plus 1. First thing we note, if I take six derivatives of this, it's going to get driven down to zero. Why is that? Well, what's the rule for taking the derivative of, say, x to the fifth? You drop your exponent, and then you subtract 1 off of it. Okay, I can only do that five times and get something that's not zero. On that fifth time, what comes out is going to be a constant. So when I hit it with 6 or higher, we go to zero. Okay, another thing, I can rebuild f of x if I know the value of the derivative, okay, first derivative through the fifth derivative at the point zero. Why is that? Let's see what happens. So I'll rewrite our polynomial as a fifth, x to the fifth, and so on. So there'll be unknowns, and we'll just see how we recreate the unknowns and match up to the original. So let's see. If I put zero into the original polynomial, all these terms are going to go away except the 1. So we'll have f of 0 equals 1 on the first one, but f of 0 on the bottom one is also going to be equal to a0. So we're going to have a0 equal to 1. Next, I can take the derivative of the top and the bottom, okay, and then I'll put 0 into that again, and we'll note, so f prime of 0, these terms are going to go away, leaving me with a 6. But we also note down here, when I take the derivative of this, we're just going to have the a1. And then these two terms will pick up that 0 and go away. So I'll have a1 equal to 6. Do a second derivative, third derivative. We're going to note derivative of the original polynomial is not going to pick up any constant terms. It'll just trail off at powers of x. So when I put 0 into each of these, we're going to get a 0 coming out. And we note also here. Well, if we had an a3 or a2 term in there, the a3 and the a2 term would also have to go to 0. Do a fourth derivative, put our 0 in. We get f to the fourth derivative at 0 is equal to 72. And note 72 is not going to be equal to our 3 here. That's going to be OK, because let's take a look at what happens in the other polynomial. If I'm going to take four derivatives, what are we doing? Go take that 4, bring it down, and then we'll subtract 1 off, making it a 3. So the first time I do it, a 4 comes down. Second time I do it, 3 comes down. Third time I do it, 2 comes down. Fourth time I do it, 1 comes down. So when I take this fourth derivative, I'm going to load up my a4 with a 24 out in front. Okay, and 24 is 4 factorial. If you note that 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, that's the definition of 4 factorial. So if I want to get that 3, I just take the derivative, fourth derivative evaluated 0, which is 72, divide by 24. That's going to give me the 3, and that gives me what we expect. For our last coefficient, take the fifth derivative, so that gives me a 240. I put 0 in. No matter what I put in there, I get 240. So we're going to have same idea. What's going to come down on this? 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 if I take 5 derivatives. So I'm going to have to divide that 240 by 5 factorial, which is 120. And that's going to give me a 2. And that'll agree with what we saw here. So the idea is we have a method for completely characterizing polynomials and how to rebuild them. OK, what's the rule that we just used? So this is what we're going to call the Maclaurin coefficient. We'll also see a variation I called Taylor coefficient. So if I want that coefficient, the a sub 0 or whatever, a sub k, you're going to take the kth derivative of your f, evaluate it 0, and then divide by k factorial. So let's take a look at an example where we rebuild a polynomial from scratch. So what will be given is I'm going to have my function evaluated at 0 and the first three derivatives evaluated at 0 also. We're also going to be told that if I take any derivatives, fourth derivative or higher, we're just getting 0. Nothing's going to come out of that. And that's going to be for all points, not just the point 0. I want to find f of x. So the first thing we're going to note is f of x has to be a polynomial. OK, so I didn't show it over here yet why that thing had to be a polynomial if we took a derivatives, six derivatives, goes to 0. All the zeros ever after go to 0. You have to have a polynomial. Let's run through it here. Well, what's going to happen? 
If the fourth derivative is exactly equal to zero, I can take the antiderivative to get the third derivative. That's going to be equal to a constant. Okay, well, to get the second derivative, I take the antiderivative of the third derivative. Then that's going to give me constant times x plus another constant. And then you can repeat this two more times to get to f prime and then to get to your actual function. So you'll see that this is going to be a cubic polynomial. Only problem is we don't know the coefficients. Okay, general rule. If I have the n plus first derivative going to exactly zero, okay, entirely as a function, not just at a point, and if the nth derivative is going to be non-zero at one point, then I'm going to be looking at a polynomial of degree n. Okay, let's finish this off. So now all I need to know is, well, I have a cubic. How do I load up all my coefficients? Okay, well, we're told f of 0 is equal to 3. So that's the constant term. So I put a 3 in there. f prime of 0 is equal to 5. So the coefficient of x1 is just going to be 5 over 1 factorial, which is a 5. Second derivative of 0 is going to be 8. So to get the coefficient of x squared, we take 8 divided by 2 factorial, which is just 2. So I get a 4. And then third factorial, third derivative of 0 is going to be 18. So I divide by 3 factorial. That gives me 6. So I'm going to get a 3. And then that is going to be the polynomial that goes with our situation here. Of course, we can check this. What do I do? Well, I'm just going to take derivatives of this thing and see what comes out. So if I put in 0 to check the constant term, that's going to be this first one. We see that 3 comes out. If I take the first derivative of this, we're going to get 5 plus 8x plus 9x squared. I put a 0 in there, and we see our 5 comes out. And then you can keep doing that to get the rest, but you got the point.